Hello, everybody. I am at Selmer, Tennessee, at the courthouse, the old courthouse, at the jail where Sheriff Pusser uh, was sheriff at that time. And they've used it before and after his term, I'm sure. But when he was sheriff, this was the jail that was active jail. And of course it's empty. They got another jail, so that's just what what it looks like now. <clears throat> An old shower. This just loops back around in this room where we were at. And we'll stop in here real quick. Check this out. This is where people would stand and talk to their visitors when they had visitation. And of course that would be closed and locked. And during uh, lunchtime, that's where the, the inmates would get their meals through. It looks like two visitors at a time. And some uh, stuff on the wall there, giving the dates and pictures and stuff of Buford. Yeah, pretty neat. This is a really old jail, and this is how this is how they open and shut the the gate or the doors rather. You see people writing stuff on the wall. And there's a shower stall there. Yeah. It's probably pretty nice back in its day when it was made. Back in the heyday. And this just loops around. This is uh, looks like a seven man cell. look very big but the accommodations are what it's, it is what it is you know yeah and go back through this way yeah like I said there's stuff on the wall memorabilia as far as dates and pictures and stuff it's pretty neat Show you a little bit there. Uh, this is where he was killed on this road, Buford, or not, he wasn't killed, but his wife was. This is New Hope Road. Uh, well, it tells you down here, uh, August the 12th, 67, his wife was shot and killed there. It's terrible, Pauline was her name. And this, Shamrock is down on State Route 45. It's no longer there now. But that's where Buford shot and killed Louise Hathcock in February of 66. I, I know people that knew him and he, he was a no-nonsense guy and never put up with people's BS, but uh, you know, he, he respected everyone, treated everyone with respect, and that's important because if you, you represent the people you, you work for, they vote for you, you know, you want to do them right, and, and sometimes that don't happen, but I know we were just here just a second ago. This is the other side. Um, it looks like uh, some more visitation uh, stalls where they people would stand and visit. And looks like another another set of uh, apparatus that would shut, shut and open the open the doors. And looking here. Oh, yeah, 
also a shower stall at one time. There's another shower stall. This is probably some kind of a holding holding facility, holding tank. And then of course you know you look outside and see Selmer. And that's some more graffiti on the wall. Well, you get that everywhere. Sometimes you gotta sandblast it and clean it and paint over it. And I think the last little room here is this one here. It's a a little small one, two-man cell with a little shower stall, load and sink, and pretty old. Yep. And you can see where, where they put the inmates' names and stuff. And I'd say the CO would be sitting here, or the deputy, whoever is working the jail. And McNary County Jail. And I think, let me go in here and check this out. This is probably the little kitchen, I would assume. There's a sink, well, no stove, no refrigerator, but you can look out and see the see the street. And, and pretty neat. Old town, that's for sure. And Muriel Buford there. Yeah, pretty cool. Well, I hope you guys liked it. Um, and I'm not finished. We'll get some other stuff here in a second. So just hang right there. Okay, now when we first come into the basement, we uh, see Sheriff Pusser's office, original office. Uh, they just left it the way it was. Pr pretty fascinating. We Got a manic in there with these clothes, and it's about the right height. He's he was he stood six foot six. Big big guy, big guy. And back there's a whiskey still that's confiscated. Yeah, you can't get in. It's locked. I tried it. That yeah, well. And across the hall is where he bathed and took a shower and cleaned up a little bit and. Some uniform up there, looks like. Got these towels there. You can see it. Buford Hayes Pusser. All right. Well, there's another mannequin. He's pretty tall. As tall as I am, taller than me. It's like a siren. Yep, there's a siren. That was Buford's personal siren. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then some pictures on the shelf there. Some mementos. Buford's tie. Some more pictures. Yeah, I hope you guys liked the video. I just thought I'd shoot it and see what happened. So, and we'll continue to walk in here for a second. A big mural on the wall. So, okay. Anyway, take care. See you guys. Okay, now we are at the White Iris, uh, a, a, a bar back in the uh, mid late 60s uh, Buford Busser was here a few times I'm sure um, a popular place where they the uh, the state line mob was in prostitution and drugs and alcohol and and anyway this place is looks like it's run down a terrible <laughs> eerie place eerie, irreparable rather and uh, it's pretty dingy looking man Roof's caving in. We <laughs> have beer bottle. Um, oh, wow. I'll try and put up a, a picture of what it used to look like back in the day. There's the bar. Yep. Pretty bad. Can you imagine all the people in here drinking and partying and having fun? 
It's like a piano back there. Don't go too far. This roof looks pretty bad shape. <laughs> yeah, an old piano. Check it out. Wow. Jeez. All right, give me some service here, please. <laughs> right, this place looks like caught on fire real bad and destroyed. I don't know what year that was, but anyway, I wanted to stop. This is where, like I said, Buford Busser came in here a few times on calls, I'm sure. And I, I do, I do believe I did read that this is where Louise Hathcock, the woman he shot in February and of uh, 66 and killed uh, I believe that she first met Buford in this place so that, that's my understanding and her and her husband Jack Jack uh, Hathcock uh, is the one that ran it I don't know who built it or how long how many years it's been here but anyhow you can see the door there and the door down there and it should match up with the, the picture I'll try to post I don't I don't know if I can I'm going to try to anyway. Anyway, I wanted to stop and check this place out. You can see the parking lot's grown over real, real bad. And the gas station down there's grown over too, real bad. Dang. All right. Hang on, we'll go to another place. Okay, now I am at the cutting line. Uh, it's right over there is Alcorn County, the Mississippi state line there. I'm somewhere between Mississippi and Tennessee. <laughs> so yeah, there we go, Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 okay, I'm, I'm at the uh, place, of course it's not here anymore. It's been torn, torn down and now overgrown real bad. This is where the shamrock was. This is where Louis Hathcock uh, was shot and killed by Buford Pusser, February the 1st of 1966. And this was yeah, part of the parking lot. A lot of the blacktops all destroyed over now, but this is where it was. Louis Hathcock's uh, shamrock. And about right in here, there, there's that light electric pole right there. So maybe you can find a picture of it and then maybe try and match it up. But there, there was the electric pole. Here's the parking lot. So over here has got to be where the office is probably located. Now we're still on the blacktop. Nope, now we're not. Now we're in the in the woods here, as you can see. But there's the the, the concrete uh, pad where you'd drive up under the awning there and walk in to the office here. And yeah, this is where the office probably would have been. And here's some, you, you see some tile, tile in there. So you're walking in the office and I believe Louise Hathcock's office was, her little bedroom or whatever it was in the back of her office was over in here somewhere. So yeah, right, somewhere right in here is where Louise Hathcock got killed by Sheriff Pusser. Yeah, let's just check it out a little bit. Some more tiling there. So yeah, we're right here. And I'll find a picture of the uh, of the shamrock and see if I can put the little snippet in of it. At least give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's uh, where Louise uh, Hathcock was killed. It was February the 1st, 1966. 
And uh, Buford came here on a call. I, I believe it was a, a woman complaining about someone had stole her pocketbook. That's why he came here. And it happened just like that. You know, she wanted to kill Buford. He was after him, I guess. You know, state line mob to, you know, do away with them all. And, and that was her ending right there, February 1st, 1966. All right, I appreciate you watching it. You know, maybe you, you know, you're a professor fan, you have some idea, you know. But, yeah, it's pretty interesting. We stopped at his house there. You know, before, I've been there many times, but we stopped there on the way back and on the way down, rather. And, but, yeah, I appreciate it. But, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, it's, it's fun, uh, these road trip adventures. But, yeah, you all take care. And see you next time. Mark Taylor from the county line at Mississippi, Tennessee state line, signing out.